Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So I just want to share with you a couple online tools I came across in doing the next installment of the After the Collapse series. I was looking to see, you know, what the uh, power demands were in various regions and what sort of power generation facilities were there. And I came across this interesting electricity map by the Canadian Electricity Association. And it shows you all of the generation stations the different types of power generation, how many megawatts of energy. It shows you all of the high voltage to low voltage transmission lines. So as you can see here on the legend, it shows you biomass, fossil fuels, hydroelectric, nuclear, solar, tidal, wind. And there's also an equivalent in the United States, which is actually far more detailed. And it's the U.S. Energy Mapping System. This is on the U.S. Energy Information Administration's website. And with this one, you can actually control the different layers. So it goes into immense amount of detail. You can look at the transmission lines. Uh, you can go into everything from natural gas pipelines uh, to oil pipelines, pretty much anything energy. This is the map that you're going to want to utilize. Now, the utility of something like this might be, for instance, like right here, I have all the solar power plants highlighted so in the case of uh, some sort of grid down situation or a prolonged disaster scenario had you known where these places were this obviously is a, a source for solar panels so that would be you know something you'd want to put on your map also you're going to find information on fossil fuel sources coal fuel sources natural gas hydroelectric wind turbines geothermal so this would be an excellent map to have at your disposal it wouldn't be too hard to, to print off your region and to just print off the various layers for your own uh, personal knowledge the grid is really a, a fascinating thing and it's really analogous to the human brain in a sense this really is the the global hive mind so if we were to take off the existing generation facilities all we have left then are these networks of power generation stations and it's very much akin to the neuron in the human brain as they say as above so below so if you imagine the human brain there's just a bunch of these neurons just like these cities here which are interconnected with one another through these various site synapses and axonal connections and dendrites and all that you know it's very much the same because it's just energy being transmitted and it creates this information network so as above so below and as we get more evolved as a human species of course we build more and more synaptic connections just like you do in your own life as you age you build more and more connections between your various brain cells sorry kind of went on a bit of a tangent there but that's just how i i think about these things uh, as you can see here in canada of course most of our population is really close to the american border that's evidenced in the red transmission lines so i should explain how the transmission lines work so red is high voltage yellow is medium voltage and blue or purple whatever that is is uh, very very low voltage so basically how it works is you have your power station which could be nuclear could be biomass solar wind turbine tidal hydroelectric etc that's going to step that energy up to a transmission substation which is going to be running very high voltages of energy into a distribution substation which will downgrade the energy to these smaller transformers which will finally allow that energy to be utilized by residential commercial or industrial purposes so with all this talk about the grid, it's very interesting to see it visualized as such. And I wasn't aware that there were so many solar power generation facilities throughout the United States. And it looks like there's just an immense amount. And that could be a very useful resource for you to, to put on your map. There's many, many layers here which would be of use for obvious reasons. So go and check it out. Go check out those two websites. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Like I say, I stumbled across this when I was making uh, an installment of the After the Collapse series, which is going to be focused on this region right here, which is the most densely packed, highly problematic region in Canada, if it were ever to come down to grid down survival. This whole region right here is referred to as the Great Lakes megalopolis it has cities like detroit chicago toronto milwaukee uh, major major urban centers and of course there's a lot of different nuclear power generation facilities in that region in fact the only nuclear power stations in canada are located east of here 
Uh, most of them are around the Golden Horseshoe region. That's this region right around Lake Ontario here where about 10 million people live, most of Canada's population. So we have three different power generation facilities here. We have Bruce, Pickering, Darlington, and if we go up to the St. Lawrence here, we also have uh, another nuclear power facility. I can't remember where it is. It's somewhere around the, the Montreal region. And then there's another one here in New Brunswick, Point La Prue. So that's rather unique because out west there aren't many nuclear power generation facilities. There are some uh, reactors in universities, but they're not actually producing energy. Most of Canada's power is hydroelectric. As you can see, a lot of it comes from northern Quebec and northern Manitoba. They're working on unifying the grid right now to make a unified power grid in Canada, but that's going to cost billions upon billions of dollars. If you're not aware, in the United States, there are three main power grids. There's the eastern, the western, and the Texas power grid. Of course, all these power grids are susceptible to cyber attack and, of course, in the worst case scenario, an electromagnetic pulse. So certainly something to understand the whereabouts of these various power generation facilities as they might provide you with certain resources or at least give you a sense of where you don't want to be. And this map also provides an interesting visualization of where civilization ends and nature begins. So it should give you a sense of, you know, where you could bug out to where there would be minimal, minimal population if you truly wanted to go off grid. You can see there's even places like this that are fly in only and they have their own sort of closed circuit power generation systems. Perhaps somebody who knows more about hydroelectric power generation can tell me whether or not these hydroelectric plants will continue to function post grid down were they not being maintained by human beings. Now, obviously, there would have to be some maintenance of the turbines and whatnot, but not to the same extent as would be required with a nuclear power generation station and certainly not, of course, a biomass or fossil fuel uh, based system where you had to constantly add fossil fuel to generate that electricity. These renewable energy sources will foreseeably continue harvesting that energy from the water source. So if these generation stations were spared the impacts of whatever disaster befell a region, would they continue to function and for how long? What would be the major challenges in maintaining those? I will post both links to the US energy mapping system and the electricity map for Canada in the description. I hope this video has been useful for you today. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for the After the Collapse installment of the Great Lakes coming out this Sunday. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.